Welcome back to the Engineerable channel. In this video, I'm going to show how to turn this handheld CNC plasma cutter, the Yes Welder Cut 55 DS Pro, which is a non high frequency start plasma cutter. It's a blowback start style plasma cutter like the Hypertherm plasma cutters. And so it's suitable for use on a CNC machine without causing any electrical interference from the high frequency. So it comes with this IPT40 hand torch. And I'm going to show you how to convert this into a machine torch to use on your CNC plasma cutter to make possibly the world's least expensive CNC plasma cutter because this Yes Welder Cut 55 DS Pro, it often sells for less than $200. So in this series of videos, I'm going to show how to use this machine torch conversion and add it on to a very inexpensive sub $200 gantry to be able to put together a CNC plasma cutter that costs less than $400. This is a very easy mod to do, so keep watching this video to learn how. On the back side of the torch are seven Phillips screws. These are number one screws, so you'll need a smaller number one Phillips screwdriver like this one. Let's undo all these screws. Okay, with all the screws removed, you can take this apart, watch out for that trigger guard. It's got a spring on it, it's gonna pop off. This is what the inside of the IPT40 torch looks like. If we lift this out here, then we can see the trigger wires. And the trigger wires go to both the trigger switch and a consumables switch, such that the torch can't fire without the consumables attached. Now this consumable switch, it can be removed from the system and not connected as long as you're careful that you always have the consumables attached and they're always tight on there. So for now, we're just going to disconnect this red wire from the trigger switch and we're going to cut at this butt splice right here. And I'm going to cut this zip tie here so that I can unbundle these cables. So the torch head is still at about a 90 degree angle from all the tubing and electrical. We want this to be in a straight line for the machine torch. So this copper pipe that's threaded into the head, it can be rotated backwards, just kind of unthreading it, which is going to be fine because it's got plenty of thread in there and we just rotated about half a turn. And now we have something that's much more in line. Now, if you're careful, you can bend back this copper tubing just a little bit to make it even more in line. That is pretty good. So this is the basics of our machine torch head right here. Just make sure that the blowback portion of the electrode, which is this right here, still clears the copper tubing. If you need to, you can loosen this Torx head and rotate that terminal just a little bit so it's not interfering with the copper tubing. But in my case, this is fine and probably in most cases it'll be fine too. If you're putting this torch on a CNC machine, then there's no need for this trigger cable to be here anymore. So you can grab the trigger cable from the other end of the cable housing and pull it out all the way through. And then use this trigger cable to connect up to your CNC controller to fire the torch. This is a GX16 two pin connector, a pretty standard thing you can get. I just received these 3D printed housings that are sold by YouTuber John Hansknecht on eBay. I'm going to provide a link down in the description below for where you can buy these housings. And you should also go check out his YouTube where he has several videos about his CNC plasma cutter. These housings are very nicely 3D printed and they fit very well together. They snap right together. In fact, he's designed them as you would a plastic injection molded part where he's put these walls in here that interlock. Like the handle has very thin walls that interlock into these slots on the other side. This is too small for 3D printing but this design is very nice for 3D printing that he's done here. All the screw holes are designed to reuse the original screws that held together the original handle. 
I don't know if these mounting points are standard. I'm definitely going to have to create a mounting plate to adapt this to my CNC gantry. The center to center distance appears to be three inches. It's also three inches in this direction, the vertical distance between those holes. And the slot center to center appears to be 2.125 inches. And the slot width is a little bit over a quarter inch. And the hole diameters are also a little bit over a quarter inch. So quarter inch screws will fit through those. Let's see how the torch internals fit in this housing. That appears to be a perfect fit. There are two things that I noticed that are affecting the fit and making a nice tight fit around the nozzle area. And one is that the circle is not circular at the bottom. It's got a flat at the bottom of the top. And that's because of the layer height. So I'm just going to file away the bottom and the top here a little bit more and allow it to clamp along the circular sides rather than hitting these flats and then being able to kind of wobble back and forth. The second is that the screws are bottoming into the bottom of the housing before they're fully clamping down. So I'm going to drill that hole just a little bit deeper to allow for more clearance for the length of the screw. See these screws are bottoming out at this point and that is not deep enough to really allow it to fully clamp down. I'm using a number 53 drill bit to drill this hole out just a little bit deeper. And now the screws go down a lot further than before, which is good. We do the same with the rest of these. Okay, so now I've filed out the bottom of those holes. Should just leave a relief there if the layer height is affecting that roundness of those holes. And the screws go down lower, so let's try to fit this housing again. Okay, now that I drilled out the screw holes a little bit deeper so the screws can go all the way in and clamp without bottoming out, and filed a relief on the top and the bottom of the circular area, it is super secure, really tight. Before there was a little bit of play in the nozzle and now I don't feel any play at all. It's very secure, very rigid. I'm happy with it now with those minor modifications. The links to all the parts and materials and where you can buy this 3D print are all down in the description. So if you want to build your own, check that out. This is the end of the torch modification video. I'm going to be making another video to show how I'm going to hook this up to my ultra low cost gantry CNC and make a super inexpensive CNC plasma cutter. And I'm going to show how to connect the trigger signals from the plasma cutter into the CNC controller and how to set up the files and run the plasma cutter. So make sure that you subscribe and be the first to get notified when I post the next videos of this project.